This is Kevin McCain with Kevin McCain Studios and ArtZealots.com and we are doing our drawing series and um, today we're going to talk about uh, using graphite and how to, uh, to create value with these. Um, first off, let me show you a couple of different handholds that you're going to use uh, with, your, with your pencils. Um, there's a, there's a couple that I that you use especially for value. The first one is very similar to like when we write. Uh, you're probably used to this handhold that we learned in school. Uh, like this for our right-handers, I'm left. Um, uh, we do something similar except we get further back on the pencil. Now you'll see me do this a lot on my tools where I'll get further back and I'll, you actually will have more control in many ways than when I get up here like this. Uh, I'll, only, I'll only get up there like that for like really fine details. Uh, for the lay-in stages, I'll be on the back of the pencil. I might even have it uh, further back like this. I might even get an extender to extend my grip all the way back here. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more uh, why uh, later. Right now I've got an HB pencil uh, for what we're uh, going to be using. Remember we have our HB, our 4B, our 2H, whoops, our 4H, and uh, our 2B. Um, so those are the pencils that we're going to be using for our graphite. Um, get those out of the way. Grab my HB again. This is our workhorse. The HB is what we use for a lot of different uh, different situations. Um, but so this is going to be our first handhold. The second one is we're going to use this like this. It allows us to use our entire arm. Um, and this is kind of like holding a baton if you're going to like, uh, almost as if you are going to conduct a symphony or something. Uh, perhaps a symphony is our drawing. I, th I think that's a really a very real comparison. Um, but those are the two handholds. Now there might be times if I'm holding this like a baton where I might be choked up on it because I'm doing some very controlled drawing or some little detail. But again, in the lay-in stages when I'm starting my drawing with my foundation values and these different things, I'm going to be up back on the back of the pencil. Now, usually you're going to want to use uh, one motion uh, when when creating your drawings. You'll either be using your fingers, uh, you might be uh, using your wrist, or you might be using your elbow, or at certain times you might actually be using your whole arm to do different types of drawing. Um, so most a lot of people will just see him do this instead of really um, loosening up a bit and using that whole arm uh, to create value. I want to let my pencil use let the weight of the pencil create the value. Um, this is like feather light sorts of of pressure that I'm using here. I'm not doing any of this nonsense or carving into my paper uh, because I want to preserve. The texture of the paper. Again, we have a medium surface paper. This is a Strathmore 300 series. Uh, I love the paper. I don't like the antique white so much uh, because you're losing your, your lighter values. But it's still it's a very nice paper, and I use it quite quite a bit. Um, so let's create a little bar of continuous tone. Now I'm going to just leave the pencil here, and not by using a lot of pressure, but just by overlapping and overlapping and overlapping. Even though I don't have much pressure, this will continue to put more value down, more graphite, until it can until it reaches its saturation point, which is right about there. What I can do from that is I can pull forward on this, and being very careful to overlap the line I put down previously, I can now start to get a band of tone or value as I pull out even more, or I continue to pull to my left, or move my hand to my left, again I can continue to you know, bring out that value. Uh, right now it looks kind of like a line with some value next to it. To soften, or to bring that together, I can come back, start at my starting point, which is, which is my darker value, and continue to let that layer and build up. I'm going to pull out just a little bit so that as I'm pulling out here it's going to be getting slightly darker.
So now we've got what appears to be a more um, some continuous tone. Now if I think for instance I hit something here on the paper I'm trying to bring this in a little bit. See this little round thing? Uh, sometimes you'll have that happen. I'm not sometimes it'll be from like oil that gets on the paper. For some reason I've got a little dot right here and that's something that you learn to work with. You can just fill this, try to fill this in as much as possible because you'll get some of the imperfection of the paper uh, to come out. A lot of times I'll put down a, a, a sacrificial piece of paper down so I don't have my hand on the paper. That way I don't get any oils on here because graphite loves the oils of your skin. Be very careful to keep your, your drawing surface very nice and clean and pristine. Um, but so we have a, a, a continuous, what appears to be more of a continuous tone. If I still feel that there's too much of that, that band of dark, I can just continue pulling it out just a little bit. And every time I go over this, it's darkening it through here to try to make it really fit. You know, I continue doing that until I have a continuous tone. Uh, if I wanted to use this handhold, uh, I can use my entire arm and I think I'll use a different pencil because I think we want something a little darker. Um, but by using this handhold, yeah, I'll use this. Um, I can. And this takes a little control. Um, I have to let the, the pencil leave its weight. You uh, just let the weight of the pencil do it, and. I can control this a whole lot more. But I could continue to fill this entire page with value uh, by using that method, keeping my hand off the paper and using this particular stroke, uh, which we will use in some of our pictures. I can keep it very light because even as dark as this is, because of the fact that I haven't pushed very hard on the paper, I could still take my kneaded eraser if I needed to and still pull this back almost a completely white paper and I could even use my white vinyl to really go all the way back down to white paper. So if I, whereas this one that's in the paper, there's no, uh, I can try to erase even, this is my most aggressive eraser, and I may be able to get some of this out that way, but I'll never get that, see that little, that's an incise line, that will, this will never come out, and because I was using such an aggressive hand, uh, sometimes it'll, I can go over with my pencil and it will reveal those incised lines in the paper so they never come out. Not something you want to do, um, but again by using these two different techniques of holding this way, using my entire arm, and or using this other technique we can create um, value gradations. Um, Usually with my sketching, I'm going to sketch my pencil, sketch my pencil like this. Um, a lot of times I will choke up on it and I'll use my entire arm and that way I can, I can just, you know, have a little more rotation to that pencil that's very nice. Um, if I'm going to go ahead and really try to, to loosen up. Uh, whenever you use your lines, try to keep your lines flowing. Uh, even if I don't get this circle the first or second time, these lines look never very nice, much better than these fuzzy lines you see because people are afraid to make a decision and they're putting these like these little fuzzy lines everywhere, not near as interesting a line. Uh, so we're gonna, you'll see me talk a little bit about the flow of the line uh, that becomes very important. Um, that we just try to make nicer lines and 
you know. So again, if I'm making a line, even though I have to do several lines maybe, uh, it still looks much better, it flows better. Uh, we also use, uh, we're going to use charcoal, our different types of charcoal, um, our, our vine charcoal, our um, charcoal stick, and um, our charcoal pencil. Now both this pencil and this stick are compressed. Basically it's just vine charcoal put under hundreds of pounds of pressure and it makes a much denser blacker charcoal like these. Um, vine charcoal, the great thing for vine charcoal, I think we'll get a different piece, um, is that vine charcoal is basically just a branch that they make into charcoal. It's great for getting really light light passages. Um, with charcoal, it's very easy to go dark. Um, anyone can go fairly dark with charcoal, and even vine charcoal can go very dark. Uh, but the great thing about vine charcoal uh, is that it, it, it comes up really easily. I can, you know, really take out that vine charcoal and not entirely, but almost take that back down to white uh, with my paper. Um, with compressed charcoal, both of these are compressed. Um, very easy to get dark lines, but those really light wispy lines are much harder. Uh, but even more importantly is uh, it doesn't wipe out. Uh, and then if I erase it, I'm never going to get back as white as my, uh, as my vine charcoal. Um, especially if I'm really putting down some very, very dark sorts of lines, that's never coming out right there. Which is fine if I, as long as I'm, <laughs> as long as I'm fine with that, as long as I've uh, prepared for that. Um, there's a, we use, this is a, a this is charcoal uh, stick, um, compressed charcoal stick. It comes in squares. This has kind of gotten rounded from being used. Uh, we roll this around our fingers, we hold it like this between our two fingers and our thumb. And usually you'll use the edge of this. You can use either the flat edge or the sharp edge. With that sharp edge, you can make really nice straight lines. See how nice that is? So it's really uh, a, a great tool, this, uh, this charcoal stick. You can put down tone very quickly. Uh, as, as you can imagine, if I was doing, um, you know, our little We had our little sphere here. You can very quickly put down, you know, start to deal with darks and lights. Whoops, that's not what I was looking for. But I could very quickly put down some tone. Now, with graphite, I don't use a lot of blending tools. Uh, with charcoal, I use a little bit more blending tools. It blends better, it blends more cleanly, um, and it can help you just get some of the midtones. Um, that sometimes with charcoal can be uh, very elusive, sometimes hard to do. Um, so we use a combination of erasers and blending tools a lot more with charcoal. Again, our blending tools are you know the cloth and or tissue or this or brushes and different things like that. Um, but this this particular tool is really great. You can get a variation of line from sharp to oh, wow. There's something on that edge. Um, sometimes you get these little hard sp spots in your charcoal. You take it, set them off, and, and they work great. I don't know where this has been, but it's probably picked up some shellac or varnish in my studio. But see how I can go from like this thin line to thick line to thin. That's something that you can re really do with this. It has a really great line quality in and of itself. Um, the line quality of charcoal much different than, say, if I was using a pencil or something. Uh, compressed charcoal uh, stick right there. Yay, great stuff. Um, this is compressed charcoal pencil, and it just has a little more control. Uh, this is a hard uh, pencil, so it's a little lighter, so I can get the a little uh, lighter tones. It can um, it can really it's a lot more controlled. Uh, this is really great for uh, crisping edges. If I have some tone with charcoal, this light tone, um, and I need a, more of a hard, a hard edge, I can use my HP charcoal to really crisp up and
clean up that line or more of an edge. I shouldn't say line because, well, depending on my type of drawing, but um, but you can uh, you can certainly do a line, but you, uh, a lot of times we use edges as well as lines. So I don't want, especially on something like this that looks like I'm playing with continuous tone, uh, wouldn't be a line so much as it would be an edge. And we talk more about edges and lines in the drawing series because they're so important. Uh, all the stuff I talk about in the class are foundation concepts. But they're concepts that everything that ever goes wrong in the drawing breaks down along the basic concepts. And so the better you can do them, the better you understand them, the, the more advanced uh, <clears throat> uh, you'll be able to progress more. And as you <clears throat> pardon me, continue to do things, you'll find that if you have problems with a drawing, it's usually those basic concepts where you're is where things are breaking down. Uh, value relationships, edges, um, shadow and light relationships, the uh, form of an object and so forth. Um, but see how I can really start to control uh, and define this object really well with this pencil. Uh, so charcoal, compressed charcoal pencils are really great tools. Uh, again, I can use them to create, uh, if I was doing a more controlled drawing, I could use all charcoal pencils um, if I was doing a little bit more of a uh, looser or just a little different uh, sort of drawing style, like what we do is what there's reductive drawing that we'll do where we take away value. Um, some other drawing methods where we'll use uh, it's a little bit more, I don't want to say haphazard, but it, it's a much more free uh, way to draw. Um, just in the technique and the approach, you, you still have control, but you start out really loose to begin with. And with that, uh, you can see with this, you, you just, you're not really defining stuff with this, you're just putting down edges and things. And so you start out really loose and then you can define something like I did here, as opposed to uh, the way people we normally work with graphite is we keep the control on it the whole time. Um, so they're just two different mediums, uh, a little bit different method, a little bit different thinking and approach, but both very effective and wonderful. Um, one last thing, uh, in terms of my vine charcoal, again, I can create values with this. Vine charcoal is great for my lighter tones, my lighter values. Um, they're great for sketching because I can correct them very well. Um, but if I want to show you that if I get way back on this, and this goes for any tool, if I get the further back on a tool I can get, the lighter I can actually create the values with. And so I'm, I'm making this wispy light. That's pretty hard to do in charcoal. If I choke up on this thing like I'm, I was like this, like almost like what we're doing with our with our pencil, you see how that's whoops, that's the uh, lightest I can go. Quite a difference from this to that. So. Um, and the hand holds a little different. Right now I'm kind of up on my palm and using my wrist. If I get off the, the paper, and again, I use my, now I'm using my elbow, a little, a little, you know, the, a little more of my arm, again, uh, I can get more control over my, over my value. That's the same thing with this pencil. If I'm doing it like this, my values are going to be much darker than if I get off this thing and, and I'm doing it from, from here or some clean paper. Um, but I can just do some really very light, light, whisper soft tones, uh, which is hard to do with charcoal to control. The control comes from where I'm holding it and what, whether I'm, if I have my palm on my paper, there's going to be more pressure on it and it has it at a different angle. If I can use more of this angle where it's more, uh, almost parallel to the paper. Again, I can use less pressure and that allows me to do a lighter line. If I can get further back, I can, again, it's, there's even more, less pressure up here at, at the, at the, at the uh, tip of this. So it can do those lighter tones. So the, remember the hand holds, we have this one here where we're a little bit further back and we're using it like a, uh, like a pencil. Usually we'll do this in the more controlled uh, parts of a drawing. Uh, the baton hold, which again I'll use more of my my uh, full arm, um, 
or I'll some, or rest my elbow on a table and use my just from the elbow lock my wrist and use just from the elbow of that motion again especially like what we we're doing here where we we're getting those whisper soft tones with our with our charcoal remember you have your compressed charcoal like these two you have your vine charcoal like this this is my this will give me my lightest tones uh, some really great uh, stuff that way um, remember with our pencil same thing if I'm doing my pencil like this and I don't know if you can see this well as dark uh, with all this dark here, maybe I ought to get a, a darker pencil. But if I'm using this, this is about as, whoops, uh, this is about as light as I can go. You just saw me doing this. You're not supposed to really do that because that's a little less, you have less control doing that. Um, whereas if I get back on this, I can I can do. See how much lighter that is. I just have much more control the further back you get on this. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's how we're gonna hold our pencil. It's a little bit about creating value, um, and we're gonna do some very different approaches. Uh, the charcoal uh, again, we'll use it a little different than the graphite. We did the graphite. I did a little bit with the charcoal, but mostly it would be the same thing with my charcoal. I would start with my uh, letting this build up, and then begin to pull it forward and and create my value that way. There's also times where I can put down a whole a whole lot of value like I did with that charcoal stick and then begin to manipulate it with um, my blending tools like my my uh, cloth, my tissue, uh, I can use again my my um, brush here and you can just uh, use these different tools to to move the, the value differently and this is what's so fun about it is it's very it's very hands-on and that's what I love about drawing um, we're going to continue to explore this um, in my in this drawing lesson and through my drawing series. Again, you can find out more at artzealots.com. You can also uh, go to Kevin McCain Studios, check out my artwork uh, and workshops and just all kinds of stuff. Um, again, this has been Kevin McCain, and uh, keep drawing. Have a great day.